Hey folks, thanks for joining us today on the show here on Doc Talk. As you can see with some of our guests, Dr. Nora Schrag is here and we're going to talk about these little worms and germs and parasites and how we can prevent them in the cow herd and working with your veterinarian to design a plan for parasite control, some of the symptoms, many different things. We're lucky to have Dr. Schrag on the show, so stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Folks, Dr. Nora Schrag, she's a veterinarian here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, a friend, a colleague, and someone who spends a lot of time working with cattle and, and we're going to talk today about parasites and controlling parasites and, and some of the things that maybe we know, maybe we don't know. We've got some EBGBs here <laughs> on the, the set. They're dead, formal and fixed. Um, but uh, let's talk about parasites okay. and some of the symptoms. So, you know, we always think about one of the common things we do when we work cattle is to give them a dewormer of some sort, and we're really used to routinely doing it. And when you think about it, we've really only had good, safe drugs to deworm cattle for 50, maybe 70 years. Um, and we've really gotten in the habit of using it, and maybe we're not as used to watching for the symptoms, and or we don't see the symptoms in cattle as often. So one, t one thing we can see is that they can get really anemic which might not present as diarrhea, it's just that their membranes get really white. So one way to see that is if you pull their eyelid down a little bit, you can see that whiteness there. Um, and that's one thing that sometimes we don't think about first thing for a parasite, but that is certainly one thing it can do. Absolutely, and, and you know, when we get to that anemia, that, that means we're in pretty big yep, trouble. Yeah, absolutely. And also when we start seeing diarrhea, that means we're in pretty big trouble. Yep. And so, you know, those are the extremes. We really don't want to get there, which is why we give them drugs and routinely deworm them. Um, but some of the things we can get before that are decreased weight gain and decreased immunity. And those are really hard to see. It's really hard to tell that that's affecting your cattle. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we've been going through some different stuff on clinical diagnostics, and we seem to get ourselves pigeonholed in this pattern recognition okay i've seen this it's calf diarrhea or it's you know sure and we just automatically blow over the top of of parasites yeah and i think we're really used to being able to use a drug and have it not be a problem and we're maybe reaching the point where that's going to be not true in some situations i know we had a group of two month old calves that when we gave them their dewormer going to grass, they actually visibly saw some worms come out of those calves, which is real unusual. Yeah. We're, we're not used to seeing that. So subtle effects are gonna be decreased performance, maybe some decreased conception rates, things that are gonna be typically normal things that we measure just might be a little bit lacking or a little bit off. And sure. then as you get to the more dramatic yeah, and so, you know, if you were really paying attention to weight gain and really managing that, maybe measuring once a month, you might notice a weight gain difference with a real minimal load. But until you get that extreme load of parasites, you're not going to notice those skinny cattle or those rough hair coats or diarrheas. Okay. Well, um, obviously, when, we, when the next thing is is to talk about the different worms, and we're going to take a break here, but, you know, just as we got about 20, 30 seconds, it's really important to work with your veterinarian and talk about these parasite programs, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and your vet, you working with your veterinarian is one of the most important things because you see what's happening in the cattle and you can communicate that to them and they can help you out. Great. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of these parasites, worms and germs that can cause some issues with your cows. More with Dr. Nora Schrag after these messages.
To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Nora Schrag. We're veterinarians here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We work with beef cattle. Today we're talking about worms. We're talking about parasites that affect your herd, how we control them, which ones they are, and you have brought some things for show and tell. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, these parasites are pretty fun to look at. And the one thing about parasites is they're all really different. So there's a bunch of different types of them. And these are actually what we would commonly call tapeworms. They're monesias. And they generally don't cause us too much trouble in cattle, and especially in older cattle. But if you got a whole bunch of them, they sure could cause some trouble. The ones we commonly see cause problems in cattle, we call hop complex. And they're actually really, really tiny worms. And we'll get a close up of these later, but you gotta look pretty close to see them. And if you imagine these being oh. in intestinal contents, you know, if you had one die and you opened it up, you really have to look close. They look about like little hairs. And so it's easy to miss them. And especially if that animal's been dead for even a couple of hours, instead of being attached to the inside of the intestine, these worms will let go and they'll just be floating. And so it's almost impossible to find them. So what are some of the different types of worms that we have? So, you know, we're talking mostly about what we call worms today, which are in a broader category called nematodes. Um, and so that's, that's where we get most of our problems in cattle. But remember that a lot of our, our drugs we give to deworm cattle also work on the insects or the arthropods like ticks and flies and then we also have some protozoans like coccidia is one we'd be familiar with and it, we don't have time to talk about all those today but these are the ones that resemble worms and just remember in cattle the real tiny ones are the ones that cause the biggest trouble for us. So these would be the the homonchus yep. and ostratasia? Yeah, yep, homonchus, ostratasia and trichostrongulus and these are actually homonchus and it's hard to tell in these fixed ones, but if you see this fresh, they're called a barber pole worm. And they're actually, you can see they're intertwined of a white strand and a red strand. They're actually kind of pretty if you don't think about what they're doing to your critter. So, so tell me what these are gonna do in the, in the, when they, obviously we go through the life cycle, but tell me about the adult worms, where we're gonna find them, what sure. kind of damage do they do? So most of the time we're going to find them in the abomasum, although it depends a little bit on the type of the worm. And so some of them will find hold farther. On, hold on, hold on. The abomasum is the true stomach of the cow. When you think about the four yeah. chambers, we have the rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and the omasum, and the, or the abomasum. And the abomasum would be like our stomach, a, a hog stomach or, or that. So, so it's not in the room and not in the reticulum, it's gonna be, right. okay, just wanted to get us there. Yep, All right. that's, that's a good point to bring up. <clears throat> and a lot of times they do damage by burrowing into that mucosa. And so they can either suck blood and make them anemic like we were talking about, so they turn pale and white, or they can just damage that mucosa so that it can't absorb nutrients. And that's where we get some of the the loss of weight gain and that type of thing. Also, the diarrhea can come from that. And they'll burrow in there and they can stay in there. Oh, they can stay in there a long time. It's, you know, they have some mechanisms for doing that and they can stay for at least a year. It just depends on weather, whether they'll come out or not. And I think that when we think about parasites, folks, we think more about, okay, our calf defecates something that looks like this and if they don't then they don't have worms yeah and that's and, not at all and true. we can have different levels of infestation but we'll get some close-ups of these but but uh 
it would be very difficult to see those. Oh, yeah, you're and you're ne these, are, these are never, by the time they make it to the back of that animal, they're all digested up. You know, you're never going to see these unless you open them actually up. All right, well, when we take, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Dr. Shrog is going to start to pull out some of the big guns that can take care of these and, and treat your cows with parasites. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Have you asked yourself how can I help provide relief to wildfire victims? Well, you can go to the Ashland Community Foundation or you can go to the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and make monetary gifts. Another way, you can buy this beautiful print that was painted by Dr. Eva Gardner of the Gardner Angus Ranch of Ashland and Clark County area before the fire. This painting will be sold through the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and all proceeds will be provided to victims of the wildfire. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Lukasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA tip of the day is bud box facilities. We're at a feed yard today that has a bud box. Uh, more, it's becoming more and more popular. The advantage of the bud box is that it's a, it's a facility that has open sides. Uh, it has one solid side, which is the gate, uh, which they come in through. But it takes advantage of cattle's natural behavior in that cattle like to see what's pressuring them and they like to return where they came from. And so the way our alley is set up is so that it, the cattle come into the box first and they make a turn and they come back around and then they go right down into the, the, the double feed uh, alley uh, and they go straight, which cattle prefer. The advantage of the bud box is that if we have one that is giving us problems going into the alley and sometimes that happens, we have a gate here that we can swing and bring around to narrow that up and have him go in. And if we have one that uh, is, is kind of ornery and uh, doesn't want to cooperate with us that way, we can at least easily come through here and come through the gate and work from the outside. And if we need to, uh, we, can have, we can have a flag or something that we can utilize uh, to uh, work from the outside and have the cattle come in as well. Both ways work really well, um, and that's how you stay safe working in a bud box. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Nora Schrag. You can see I'm getting older. Uh, Got to use this now to, to see things that we write or especially to pick up some of these little boogers and, and see them. But uh, uh, we're talking about parasites and, and we've got the symptoms, we've isolated the the problems now let's talk about some of the the tools that we have to control or treat sure so when we're talking about the worm parasites we basically only have three different classes of drugs okay. to treat those um, so one of the maybe the most common one is macrocytic lactones and so that would be what we commonly think of as ivermectin or ivomec um, but there's several different versions of that drug but they're all in the same class and so they all work real similarly um, then we also have what we call the white wormers, which those are 
really literally white. Um, they're the ones you give orally. And those, we, you know, there's three main ones that we, that we talk about or that we have available to us here. That'd be like Panicure or Synanthic or Valdezin. Yep. And so those, they can be real handy and they kill the worms pretty quickly, um, but you have to give them orally. And so some people think that's a little frustrating. And then the last class we have, really we only have one drug available to us in it, and that's Levamisol. Um, and it has been on and off the market. Yep, and so when we're thinking about control, Levamisol, but really it's, it's down to two that we're using the most of. Right. We're using the macrocytic lactones, which it's really hard for me to say macrocytic lactones. <laughs> I just say the, the ivermectins or avermectins. Sure. Uh, and then the white dewormers are our finbendazole or, or bendazoles, right? Yeah. And, gen, you know, the, the white dewormers, we only give them orally, but if you think about the avermectins, most of those have an injectable form and a poron form. And so, the, you know, the poron is really convenient and gets used really commonly. It also has some advantages in that if you're going for some of those ectoparasites or the, the ticks and, and flies and things that live on the outside of the cow, pouring on sometimes is better for those. But if we're really thinking about these little worms that live inside, we get a big fluctuation in dose and it's hard to get enough consistently in a cow when you're pouring it on sometimes to go after these little guys. Yeah, and I almost exclusively, unless somebody has a pretty pretty good reason for ectoparasites, I'll, I'll use the injectable form to get, to get our worms. internal Absolutely. parasites. Um, you know, we, we have some, some people out there too on feeder cattle and things that will prescribe to, to dual therapy, right? The Absolutely. injectable and the white yep. dewormers. And you know, so one of our challenges coming up is we're finding some more resistance to these. And so, you know, we've done a lot of research and, and for a while we thought, well, if we use two drugs at once, then we're going to build resistance faster. And actually that's not the case. We found if we rotate drugs, so if we use one and then we use the other one and then we use another one, we build resistance really quickly. But if we actually use a combination at the right time and at the right dose, we can actually decrease the rate of that resistance if we use it in conjunction with some other strategies. So we can maybe talk about those later. But. You bet. Well, I think whenever we're talking about these, work with your local veterinarian. Absolutely. They're going to know the more prevalent uh, uh, parasites. They're going to know if there is a resistance pattern. Um, but again, if there is a resistance pattern, remember this. We only got two products, right. really. So. Yeah, and you know, something else we didn't talk about and a reason to really engage your veterinarian is a lot of factors can change how these drugs work. So your animal's age is gonna determine their resistance to it. The genetics are gonna play a role. And so there's a lot of different things that you have to take into account when choosing a drug. You bet. When we come back, we'll wrap up on putting it all together on Parasite Control with Dr. Norris Rock. The Kansas Sweet Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. The wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground, and 
thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. And I, I farm and ranch by myself. This is not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And, I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Gotten down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30 the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes, and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Nora Schrog. She's a friend and colleague. We're veterinarians here at K-State's College of Vet Med, uh, having a great conversation about parasites. And, and when we think about the symptoms, the, the, you know, the big thing is to make sure you deworm your cows. Yeah and make sure that you deworm your, your calves at weaning and that you're using products and, and paying attention. It's, it's a lot of times when people brand or they run cattle through before turnout and we decide not to deworm. That is something I think is a major mistake and you need to make sure you deworm your cows. It can sure really affect your bottom line and, and as, as much as deworm your cows, maybe talk with your veterinarian about exactly when and how. Uh, because getting the timing right, depending on your geographic location and the weather patterns in that area, can really make a big difference on how effective that drug is going to be in controlling it. Yeah, and so so walk me through some of the things you as a veterinarian. You know, you, I, I got some cows that are going to turn out. What are what are some things that are going through your mind? Sure. So I'm going to think about where they're going to get turned out. Are they going to get turned out on low river bottom ground because the worm burden there might be really different than if they're going to get turned out on a hilltop where we've got lots of good drainage, things like that. And the other thing that makes a huge, huge difference with worm load is stocking density. And so if we have a worm problem, we can deworm all we want. If our stocking density for that pasture is not appropriate, we're going to build resistance really quickly. That dewormers, we're not going to get as much return out of that investment on dewormer, and just we can create a lot of trouble for ourselves. But if we really manage our pasture appropriately and manage that stocking density, then it can really help us. I, I think that's the reason why, right, that we see this in our small ruminant friends because we overgraze and we never rotate pastures. Well, not never, but but it's intensive grazing and they're always in the same area on small paddocks and we just constantly reinfect the ground. Sure, sometimes we get that. I mean, with our, with our small ruminant friends, we certainly have a resistance problem. So even if you perfectly manage the pasture and they've done some studies where we, you know, let that pasture sit or rotate and even let it sit for six months, we can still have a problem. So, so being careful not to overgraze. Being careful to just keep ahead of that. We don't want to get to that point where no drugs work. Yep. Um, what types of drugs, combinations, things that, that people should be thinking so about? So when you're talking with your veterinarian, it's important to tell them, you know, where these cattle are going, when's the next time you're going to catch them. You know, we're going to deworm, we're going to deworm based on when the worms are there, but sometimes the ideal time to deworm isn't when we have access to those cattle. And so we'll just communicate what's going to happen in our production system. And then your veterinarian might say, oh, if we shift this by a couple of weeks, it's going to change it. Or we might say, well, this is the best we can do. We're going to take that into account. But really, I mean, nobody does this, but the ideal time to kill these parasites and decrease pasture load is six weeks after turnout. And which... you, you can have uh, work with your veterinarian, too, to, to take some fecal floats or take some Absolutely. fecal Absolutely. And that's one of the things that we, you know, can really tell us, are we using the right drug? Is it working the way we think it should be working? Do we need to add another one? And we've gotten a lot more efficient. It used to be pretty expensive. We had to run, you know, 15 samples and then come back in two weeks and run 15 again. We found that we can take 15 samples and combine them into four and run that and run four again. And it's a lot easier and cheaper. <laughs> Thanks for being on the sure. show today. Great information, folks, managing parasites in your cow herd. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. If you want to find out what we do here on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. 
I'm Dan Thompson here with Dr. Nora Strong. Thanks for watching us today on Doc Talk, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.